Hello, um, I'm Devanshi and uh, I'm, this is my family farm. Uh, we are in Kotkai, which is in Simla district of Himachal. And uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, some local food and uh, cuisine of this area. Hello, and I'm Michael, and I'm originally from England. Now I'm the general dog's body here at Himalayan Orchard. And uh, I'm going to talk about some other non-local food. Uh, Himachal, of course, is known for apples now, but uh, before apples became the commercial crop, people mostly grew red rice, amaranthus, buckwheat, barley, and similar cereals and grains. Um, and uh, as such, what we ate, our food culture developed around what was grown. So one of the most popular dishes called Sirku in our area, or Sidhu. So traditionally it was made using a bit of old fermented dough to leave in the rest of the dough. Uh, much like sourdough bread which is so popular now in the West and is also getting popular in India. So you would knead the dough a previous night and leave it to ferment and double in size using that bit of sourdough. Uh, and in the meanwhile you'd prepare the stuffing which could be roasted poppy seed with either jaggery for a sweet variety or ginger and spices for a savory sirku. And then there's the goat fat stuffing, uh, which is um, much out of favor now, but it was really very popular when I was a child. Uh, my grandmother would make it when we'd go to people's houses, you'd be served that in winter. And um, you eat it with ghee, with melted ghee. All of these sirkus is traditionally eaten with red, uh, with ghee, melted ghee, or you eat it with uh, uh, marsh, marsh balri ghee dal. And that's raw, uh, kidney beans with black lentils. They're cooked in a pot for the whole day, basically, and are much like marsh ghee dal in Punjab, and you eat it with that. Another traditional uh, dish is uh, something like crepes called uh, patande in the local language. It's very simple. You just make it, uh, it's like a, a batter. You make a batter with water and whole wheat flour. Uh, you make it on a griddle and uh, you eat it with honey and ghee. Or you make a roasted uh, a poppy seeds uh, chutney and you eat it with ghee. Uh, Traditionally, this was served when a guest came to your house This was, and you had nothing ready. You would quickly mix and uh, make a batter of uh, flour and water and then make it. And it was something you could serve very quickly to your guest. Uh, another sweet dish that you start your meal with is called bari, which was a little by, bit like halwa, except it doesn't use any ghee or oil. So you make a pudding uh, like a halva out of water, jaggery and flour and becomes this gooey sort of uh, halva kind of uh, mass and then you serve it on a plate, you make a little uh, well and you fill it with liquid uh, melted ghee and then you take uh, bite folds and you dip it in the ghee and you eat it. Uh, that again is served at the beginning of a meal. Another traditional dish is the goat meat curry. So it's actually not just regular goat meat, it is dried goat meat. So every family would kill a goat or two, depending on how much they could afford, and hang it in a cool, dry place in little pieces for curing naturally, which would sort of tenderize it. Um, a bit similar to, but not exactly like the cured meats of the West. So, uh, and then that meat would be used to make a curry throughout the winter months. Uh, nothing is wasted. Uh, the blood and the intestines were used to make a sausage called Lohandri. It's not really made very often now and very few houses actually make it. Uh, the nearest relative to this is the black pudding, which is Irish or Scottish, uh, where the intestines are, were stuffed or are stuffed with uh, rice and goat blood uh, and spices in a sort of a long sausage and then it is steamed 
and before eating you cut it into smaller pieces much like a Swiss roll you fry it uh, before serving it and that's how you eat it it's nice and crisp it's a bit of an acquired taste and uh, not everyone can really appreciate it so we do many things with food that um, might seem exotic or imported but actually they're built on things that pe local people do traditionally so for example we make uh, prosciutto salami sausages but then on the other hand so do our the workers who work here every day uh, every year they slaughter a goat and hang it up the only difference is perhaps that our sausages are made with herbs that we grow in the garden and garlic which comes from the orchard and we also do a kind of chorizo which is a spanish kind of sausage which is spicy and we smoke them i i have a smoking cabinet uh, which we use to smoke not just sausages but and prosciutto but also fish and malt i make my own malt which uh, from barley uh, which i use to make beer and cheese also we smoke with beer uh, i start off with the barley which we buy in the market so far uh, and use hops to bitter it but sometimes i use other things uh, that grow locally such as hemp and uh, we used to smoke uh, we also forage in the forest and in the orchard for mushrooms and other things in the spring we get uh, morels which are locally are called gucci and in the monsoon period we get um, various mushrooms uh, agaricus uh, chanterelles bluets a kind of porcini and so on we ask the local people who also collect them uh, you know which ones are which ones are okay shaggy ink caps another one uh, not only mushrooms but uh, fiddlehead ferns are also collected uh, which we make pickles from and we uh, of course it's an orchard an apple orchard apple pear orchard so we uh, juice the apples which don't go off to market we juice and from that we make uh, just plain apple juice or ferment it to make cider cider vinegar and all of this is bottled in recycled beer bottles many of which we gather from the forest because we, uh, occasionally we do a, a forest cleanup and there's plenty of old beer bottles which we um, sterilize and use if i was asked which one food i'd want to represent the state i'd definitely go for sirku or sidu as it's known mainly because it has regional variations of its own uh, but there are other reasons too the first one being that it's uh, the traditional mother of modern sourdough breads secondly you can be as creative with the stuffing as you wish to be you can of course do the traditional stuff but also be as innovative as you want to be by using cheese different seeds instead of just poppy seeds you can use sesame seeds or walnuts uh, you can also do non-vegetarian versions by stuffing uh, minced meat and if you happen to make non-stuffed plain circus you could eat the leftovers for breakfast uh, much like a crumpet by slicing it horizontally in half toasting it and eating it with cream and jam and uh, Finally, I like it because it's steamed and not fried. I like that healthy twist to it. I think a standout dish for me would be the goat curry that uh, our workers 
goats produce every year. They slaughter a goat in January and they hang it up for about two months. I mean, in small pieces, they hang it so that it ferments, it tenderizes, and it's really something quite, uh, quite unusual, quite special. 